Many times, while working the daily grind on the job, many of us are stressed out about the security or the lack thereof. What we need to do is learn to let your skills define you, not the job that controls you. Join me today as I talk about losing your job in episode number 68, what seems like a negative could really be a positive. Welcome to the Surging Forward Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Surging Forward Broadcast, where we're helping you to have a positive view and a negative world. My name is David Valentine, and I'm here to help you see the value in the job you do and how you can keep surging forward. Well, hello again, and welcome to the Surging Forward Podcast. It's been another long week, and we got another great week ahead of you. I want to welcome you if this is your first time listening. Um, this is a show about creating a positive view and a negative world to keep us all surging forward. Believe me, it helps me just as much as I'm hoping it's helping you guys out there and uh, those of you that listen. And uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this, whether you're driving or whether you're working on your job or sitting at your desk or, you know, if you got the earbuds in and you're listening, uh, like I say, I want to thank you for taking your time and hopefully you can get just a little bit out of this episode because that's what it's about is for all of us to learn. Um, I, I get a lot of the encouraging emails that I get and uh, for even those that find me on Facebook and, and just say, hey, you know, I want to be friends with you on Facebook, you know, and, and if that's the case, hey. Look me up there on Facebook. You'll see me on the guy with the headphones on. And, you know, you can find me on the Surging Forward Facebook page. That's really the best way to find me. But if you do, just say, hey, I, I met you from the podcast. And uh, love to share and, and, and see what's going on with you. And I share a lot about what's going on with myself also. And that's what helps us all grow. So um, today's title, um, it, its title's a, a little bit interesting this time it's called what seems like a negative would really or could really be a positive i'm sorry i'm just you know it's been one of those long days i'll be going into that actually in next week's episode i've got a lot going on in the um in my life right now things are happening very very fast but uh that's a good thing it's getting us ready for the new year but you may be wondering why would i talk about something negative on Thanksgiving or so close to Thanksgiving. Many of you listen to this, it may be past Thanksgiving or it may be Thanksgiving Day by the time you listen to this. This will come out uh, the Monday before Thanksgiving. Uh, and I know all of us have the nice busy schedules going on. But, you know, that's a time for a lot of us to be thankful and, uh, you know, about all the great things going on. But let's be truthful. Many of you know somebody or you may be even listen to this episode right now and say, I don't have a whole lot to be thankful about. I mean, let's be real. There's so many other things that's controlling your life right now, including our job schedule, our boss, our family. Yeah, even family, they control us a lot of times. And, you know, you can't do what you want to do because you're being called for this. And even the things we have to get done for a good cause, whether it's your church or, or, or it's a charity you work for or some kind of thing that you're doing to benefit for others. And it just feels like a burden. Well, you know, it's like, what do I have to be thankful for? My goodness. Or it could be one of those things where I don't even have a job. I just lost my job. Or they're talking about layoffs on my job. You know, so let's be real. Many people put on that face and they act like they're thankful, but inside they're really hurting. 
people just want, they, they're just wishing down that somewhere, somehow, sometime, somebody would just listen to them. Well, my friends, first of all, if, if that's you, or if you know somebody like that, man, turn them on to this podcast because this is one here. It's it's a message of encouragement. And if that's you out there, hey, drop me an email out there. Uh, you know, look us up on Facebook, Surging Forward Podcast, or simply drop me an email just to Dave at surgingforward.com. You know, I don't have all the answers and I'm never going to tell you that I do. I'm just being real. You know, so that's the reason for this title. Because I want to talk to you about how you can take a negative and turn it to a positive. You know, I've always tried to be honest when I share things with my students in the apprenticeship program. You know, I don't sugarcoat things and say crazy things like, rah, 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 you know, once you get your journeyman's card, life's going to be easy and you're not going to make a ton of money and, you know, money's just going to flow in and you can get the big truck and you can get the big house. Well, you know what? There's a lot of contractors out there and a lot of uh, tradesmen out there that have the big trucks and the big house, but they just didn't fall off the trees, man. Uh, You know, let's just be real right off the bat. There was a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that went into that nice, pretty truck that they got. A lot of overtime. Uh, a lot of cuts on the hand. I mean, let's be real. Okay. So that's not like it is how it is at all. It's not easy. Life is not just, you know, a rose garden to where we just go out and say, okay, um, man, I got my card. All right. Let me go home and, and, and wait for somebody to call me with the 37, 38, 40 buck an hour job. Oh, what a drag. Nobody's calling me. That's not going to happen, man. It's not going to happen. You've got to go out and do stuff. So that's part of what I'm going to talk about. I want to give you the real life things. You know, life is real. So many of you guys listening to this out here know the good as well as how hard these, the trades are out there and how hard it is to sometimes do the job, but also how rewarding it is. Cause we could drive around the neighborhood a lot of times, no matter where you're at. Those of you that's been in a trade for a while say, yeah, I built that. Yeah, I worked on that building. How many guys do that? Come on, let's brag about it a little bit. You guys doing a great job out there. Men and women that are working out there in the trades. I know I drive my wife crazy sometimes. We'll be driving around the neighborhood. I built that building. Now, you know, I didn't build it from foundation up. All I did was the electrical work in it. And I may not even work in the whole building. I may have only worked in it for a day. But I claim it. I was there. I know where some of the stuff's at in there. Hey, we all do that. And that's what's cool. That's what gives us that pride in our work and what we do. And that's a good thing. But this week, I want to share um, two stories with you, actually. And um, both of these stories are true. And the reason I know they're true, because they happen in my life. So I'm going to share a little bit about my life today. And and I just want to be real with you guys. And, and I'm hoping it, it's going to give you that encouragement. Um, and, 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 and forgive me when I'm talking guys, I'm talking to you women out there too. I, I, you know, uh, forgive me for that. I, I do that in class a lot and I have a young lady in my class and, you know, she always, you know, Ashley, she, she just always looks and she goes, you know, she smiles when I say that and I go, I'm sorry. She goes, Oh no, that's okay. Well, it's not okay. I, you know, there are a lot of great women in the trades and you know what? I tell you, bottom line, a lot of women actually, I hate to say it guys. They're doing better work than you are sometimes. Uh, and some ways are a little tougher. So we better tighten up a little bit. But anyhow, I'd be known to that. So, um, so what I want to do, I want you to understand that, you know, these stories are true. And if you're listening, each one of you listening out there has your own story. But whether it's a positive or a negative depends on the choice that you make. It's not based on the story and it's not based on whoever influenced that story it's, or it's not based on the something that created that story or the circumstance that surrounds that story. It's based on the choices you make. So you're going to see this in my two stories that I chose to tell for this episode. So listen up a little bit and, uh, Hopefully you'll get a little bit out of this. So I want to start off with an incident that actually happened about 28 years ago when I was just a young electrician 
working in a field. And it happened right about this time at Thanksgiving. You see, the cool thing about it, I was working for a contractor, and uh, we're doing a great job. Contractor, you know, loved us. Matter of fact, we're working tons of overtime. I can remember it to this day. Me and about six other guys, we're, we're, we're on the crew, and we're knocking out these strip malls. I mean, we were doing all the parking lot lighting for these strip malls, and that was our job. We were doing the parking lot lighting. Uh, and we would do one strip mall, boom, right away, go to the next one. Bam, just, just knocking them out all through the summer. And I had been with this company for like two years and we were just knocking them out and lots of overtime and we were just killing it, man. And, uh, getting praises from the foreman all the time. Matter of fact, it got to the point where the foreman would very rarely even come out and talk to us because we were killing it that good. And, uh, I mean, I was coming home beat and tired all the time. I can remember I had my two little kids at the time and we were just kind of, you know, life was actually doing pretty well. I mean, I'm making decent money. I'm, I'm, I'm not a millionaire, but I was a young guy at the time. I had just gotten my, um, my card up in Chicago. I actually, they have a contractor's card and I actually had my contractor's card at the time. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, I'm sorry. I take that back. I did not have my contractor's card. Nope. Because I, I uh, apologize for that. I did not have it. So I'm just a young electrician up there working. Um, and uh, we're doing these malls. And lo and behold, right around Thanksgiving time, matter of fact, it was a week before Thanksgiving. So it was right about the same time when I'm doing this podcast. And uh, he, he, the guy drove up on the job site and uh, he gave us all a Manel envelope. Now, he had done something similar last year, and we thought this was like, wow, this is our extra money for Thanksgiving, you know, to, you know, there's enough money to go buy us a turkey, which was cool because, uh, you know, I was making good money, but yet I was still young, not making a ton of money. We had a house payment and, you know, things are expensive back in the, you know, 80s there. And, uh, you know, interest rates alone were sky high. So we're, we're, we're rocking it. We're doing okay. And, uh, he hands us these envelopes and the foreman just didn't say a whole lot. He seemed like in a strange mood, but we just figured he's busy. And he drives off. Well, all six of us, we open up these envelopes and, uh, we're just shocked. I mean, the, the shock was beyond undescribable. It was like, wow. And we're all comparing what we got here. And now, thankfully, we got two weeks of severance pay, but we had just gotten laid off. I'm thinking, how could this be? We're doing a great job. We just got told we're doing a great job. He loves us. We're, we're, we're doing a fantastic job. And it's like, how can this be? Well, a buddy of mine, he told me, he says, well, we can go collect unemployment. I'm like, okay. Yeah. What does that mean? You know, at the time, I think I was making, um, I think it was like 200 bucks a week or, or, or something like that. Um, it, it wasn't a lot, especially for living up in the Chicago area, but it was enough to, you know, make a difference. And, uh, I, I now actually I think it maybe was more. That was maybe about four hundred bucks a week, you know, because we were making like uh, ten bucks an hour, whatever it was. So by the time taxes came back, yeah, maybe it was about two hundred something dollars. By the time our taxes, insurance, all that. But anyhow, the the point being, I remember saying, okay, I'll, I'll I'll go to the unemployment office. So I figured I'd go there the very next day, and I go there. And back then, it wasn't online like it is today. You had to wait in these long lines, and of course, you wait in a long line. You finally get up there. And they tell you to fill out this form. Okay, so you go fill the form out. Then you wait in another long line. You say, oh, you filled out the wrong form. It's like, well, that's what the lady gave me. Nope, you got to fill out this form. Ugh. Okay, so you go wait in that long line. Long story short, unemployment took you all day when you went down there. And it was crowded back then. I mean, the 80s were, were a tough time. Um, there was a lot of unemployment. Interest rates are very high. Unlike today, interest rates are low. And unemployment, you know, we just had all the massive layoffs back in 2007, but it was nothing like that. It was tough to find a job, especially in the middle of winter up in Chicago or right before winter, I should say, you know, Thanksgiving time. So I finally get to talk to the lady and I'll never forget this, my friends. And it's, and it's stuck with me. It's almost made me who I am today with my drive and, and my entrepreneurship that I have because what happened changed my life. And it was a negative. And a lady looked at me and we're going through the whole thing. And she says, well, you know, your unemployment is going to be $75 a week. 
and it won't start for another three weeks. I went, hold on a minute, $75. You know, I was making 200 What do you mean $75? Well, it's a percentage and da-da-da-da, on and on and on. And I'm like, I can't live off that. I said, I'm going to have a job in two weeks at least. I, I know I'll have a job within a week. I'm going to tell you what, what she said, without even realizing it, rocked my world. She told me, don't be so negative, young man. You deserve this money. I went, <laughs> no way. So after being there all day, I'm tired, I'm aggravated. I never did sign the papers. I just threw them down. I was ticked off and mad. I went home, told my wife, I'm talking to her. She goes, oh, wow, did you get the unemployment? Did you do this? Did you do that? I said, no, I didn't do it. What? What are you kidding me? Uh, how did it? I said, hey, I'm going to find a job. Well, my friend, I go knocking on the doors and yeah, jobs were hard to find. There weren't any, especially for a, a young electrician who without a lot of experience. Well, I went out and I hustled and I knocked on doors. Finally, I found a guy willing to give me a chance and hire me. Well, he hired me to do his work for him. And the way he hired me, I'm going to tell you, it was really kind of different. Uh, I don't think you could do it today with the labor board stuff. I mean, maybe if you did under the table, I don't know. I found the job within the first week. And the, the, the cool part about it was the guy said, I've got plenty of stuff going on. And the cool thing about it was he wasn't going to pay me uh, $200 a week, but he's going to pay me 150 bucks a week. So I was like, cool, I can deal with that. Uh, and, uh, you know, I said, look, I said, I really need this job. But I really didn't have a whole lot of experience behind me. That's why I remembered I didn't have a whole lot of experience. So I didn't have my card stuff yet. So I says, I take, you know, she says, well, I really can't do it. I'm looking for an electrician. I said, look, let me tell you something. Let me work for you for at least three days. And then you decide, I I'll, I'll do whatever you need to do. Well, he took me up on the offer. And I worked with a guy literally for free for three days. And this was my third day into looking for the work. So yeah, I worked for him on Saturday and he hired me and, uh, I worked for him for quite a while and, and I grew, but I kept growing as an electrician and eventually somebody else heard what kind of job I was doing and I got offered another job. I wouldn't even look for one. Eventually I got to working over at the hospital and I got a job work at the hospital. Eventually I started hanging around some other people who are positive in other ways and had their own businesses. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. So I went and got my own contractor's license. You know, one guy helped me how to do it. And so Long story short, I ended up, you know, starting my own business up there in Chicago area. Now, keep in mind, I'm from down south. All right. I'd only been in Chicago for maybe a year and a half, two years, not very long. And I started my own company. Now, I worked hard with that company and some things happened. And I wanted to come back down to the Virginia Beach area in Virginia. So, you know, not go, without going into all the details, I end up selling that company, uh, turning it over, and I came back down here to Virginia. Well, I started off, and some things happened, but I ended up working for a couple other companies down here, and eventually I started another company down here in this area. But long being in short, I worked for a couple companies down here in Virginia, and but I always, you know, other opportunities have come along, and so I never got laid off again. I I'll tell you that. But other opportunities would come along. People would see how hard I worked and what I did. And I showed people my skills. And I was always trying to learn. Training to me was very, very important. I would grab whatever training I could get. I would always listen to what those around me would say. Uh, eventually, I was even selected and by another peer of mine. I, I kind of shared that story about being an apprenticeship teacher. I was like, wow, okay. Uh but I continued to learn. I mean, I can remember going to get my own conduit and learn how to bend conduit on my own. That's what I did. We didn't have videos back then. I had a little black and a book that had black and white pictures in it. That's all we had. The old Benfield book. I'll never forget that book. I probably still got it in my bookshelf here somewhere. But I've had many jobs in a roundabout. Now, let's fast forward to today. Um, it's funny how things come full circle. My wife, on the other hand, you know, she's always been very dedicated on her jobs and, uh, you know, staying at one place. 
And she used to work for a company here locally in the area. When we moved back down here, she she helped me out in the business up on Illinois. I mean, did a great job. She's always my behind the scenes person helping me out. Well, I never fully started my own business down here in Illinois. I spent a what's it that like I did up in Illinois because down here in Virginia, I just mostly work for other people. Um, I was going to start a couple businesses and I tried to, but I just never had time to get it off the ground the way I wanted to. So I ended up working for others and I, you know, right now I'm working for an engineering firm, like I said before, but I would always get opportunities and I'd stay with these companies and I get offered another job somewhere else and I think about it. Hmm, okay. And I would take it, but her, she started about 22 years ago, you know, somewhere around that time frame, and she got a job working for this place. And she's been there for over 22 years. Now, what the amazing thing, and I'm sharing this from my heart, about a week ago, right around Thanksgiving time here, she got called in the office, her whole department, and um, got told, uh, hey, you guys have done a great job. Um, There's some boxes in your office. Go ahead and pack them up, and uh, this will be your last day. And I'm going to tell you what, she was shocked. She she called me up and uh, I actually went and helped clean up. And it's like everybody there was just like, they they didn't even know what was going on. And they didn't know what had just happened. You put your life into some place. And it's like the same thing happened to my wife that happened to me, you know, over 30 years ago. And. Not that when it happened then, it didn't happen to my wife. Because, yes, when I got laid off, yes, it affected my wife. But just like this one here, it affected me. And it's like, wow, I just can't believe this. So we started talking about it. And, you know, the interesting thing is, you know, she wasn't upset. And she wasn't mad. She was more in shock. It's like, wow, what you've done a great job. But. This is your last day. And they got rid of the whole department. I mean, there were some people had been there for eight years. It was crazy. There wasn't even a, you know, there was one person getting ready to retire in a little, little bit. It's like, wow, how does that happen? It's like, okay, so what does this mean? You know, what is that? How does that have to do anything? Well, what it has to do with is, you know, I could have just sat down and said, you know, and taking the person's advice and just taking that one lady's advice and collecting my unemployment. And this is where I'm getting ready to where I'm going with this back then. But I chose not to, I chose not to, I told, I, you know, not that unemployment's bad by no means. Hey, you know, I know some people are on it. Uh, my wife's looking into it right now, even though ironically, she's probably not going to be able to get it. That's a whole nother story. Um, I'm going to that one day, but you know, sometimes honesty, you don't get the benefits, but you will get them in the long run. Trust me. And that, that's my stance, but that's a whole another podcast. I think I've already done a podcast on that, but you know, so I could have taken that lady's advice way back then and just said, okay, collected on my employment, sat home, kind of piddled around to try to find a job. And you know, there's nothing out there. And I got, have gotten my $75 a week. I would have never been inspired to do anything more. I'd have been miserable. I'd have been mad. I wouldn't have thought about trying to learn something and inspire myself and get myself out there. I would have never become a better electrician. I would have never met the other individuals that inspired me to start my own business. I would have never had the inspiration from other people as they saw me trying to move up to another level. You see what happens when people see somebody working real hard? You're going to attract positive people. When people see you sitting around doing nothing and don't care, some people won't even give you the time of day. So more than likely, I'd have stayed unemployed all the way to the summertime. I'd had a lot of bitterness for the system. Yet I'd have been so eager to jump back into the system and get a job, scared to death of when am I going to get laid off or when am I going to get fired again? Because I'm only going to work just as hard as I can or I'm going to do as little work as possible just to make the dollar because I hate the companies. And so I'd have been in that vicious cycle. All right. So keep in mind, I've had quite a few jobs and I always try to learn more, but I try to make myself valuable. So when we decided to locate back down here from Virginia, you know, again, like I said, I worked for other different companies. 
I never let the situation get to a point where I would be hurt if somebody got laid off, if I got laid off. I was already always ready for it. I refused to ever be put in that situation where I wouldn't have the right skills. I was always reading and learning. You know, I always had it in the back of my head. When I knew a layoff was coming, I would actually bail before the layoff happened and I would have another job lined up. I'd always be talking to people. I already got my fingers out. I'm already, you know, trying to get myself there. Now, ironically, almost to the date when my wife gets laid off 25 years, 20, 28 years later or 23 years later, whatever the case may be, I'm not real good with the time numbers. Uh, my wife will always correct me with whatever it is and I'm probably wrong. But anyhow, t- over 20 years, you know, what a shocker. Yeah, we were shocked. But, you know, she got very comfortable in her job. So you know what? It hurt almost more personally and emotionally than it was about the job itself because you're just like, why? What did I do wrong? Well, my friends, let's turn the positive, you know, turn that negative into a positive. Because the first shock is you did nothing wrong. She did nothing wrong. You see, we have to look at it in reality. The company has no obligation. Any company out there has no obligation to keep you employed. You know, in reality, their obligation is to make money and turn a profit. You know, you're not the ones running the company. I'm not the ones running the company that I happen to be working for. Now I'm running my small little company here, surging forward. And, you know, we don't have any employees. It's simply me and, you know, doing the things here. And my wife helps me out here and there. But, you know, You want to turn a profit. You want to make money. And so the company that's there has no obligation to keep you employed. They don't care about your house payment. They don't care about the kids you're raising. In reality, they try to act like they do, and it sounds like they do. But in reality, if they're not making a profit, you're not going to be working there. So even if you're on the board and you are part of running the company, they might even have a secret meeting to get rid of you. It happens all the time. So again, we decided to take that negative and turn it into the positive. She's been using a lot of that free time now to do the same thing I did before. Get more training. Get different training. And I'm encouraged to say that it's been positive because now she's been busier more than ever. Only in the past two or three weeks she's been off. And so she's providing support for both of us to keep me and her surging forward because she's she's being able to look at all these new things going on on the internet and 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 so much more with you know the podcast and the blogging and, and even my website she's she's made my website already look a whole lot better just a little tweak she's done if you guys haven't noticed check out the ww surging forward website you know the video looks better some of the wording's been changed she, she corrected all my typos man uh <laughs> i mean I mean, I've been doing fairly well for all this time and didn't even realize all these typos were up there because, you know, I'm the guy in the middle of the forest and she looked at it from above the trees. So we're taking that negative and turning it into a positive. See, that's where you can go every right now. Every decision you make every day can make a difference on the outcome in your life. If you're around negative people, My friends, start moving away. You don't have to forget them as friends. They can still be your friends. But don't let that negative just absorb you and and, and get caught up in it because it's easy to do. Surround yourself with positive people. Believe in that positive thing that can happen. You see, I see a lot of negative stuff on my job. Yeah, I'm still working full time. And I see a lot, excuse me, a lot of negative stuff that happens. You know, but one day, That right door may open up. I have to be ready. I have to keep myself trained in the background. I have to make sure I have the right skill set so that I'm ready for that opportunity. You know, I don't have many people positive around me all the time encouraging me. Where do I get my encouragement? I listen to a lot of different podcasts. And you know what? I'm going to make a list of some of the podcasts I listen to, and I'll put them on the website there. So, I listen to a lot of different ones as I'm driving around. I drive back and forth to work. Or when I drive back and forth on my long distances, sometimes my job requires me to do. I don't listen to the negative stuff on the news. I'm not going to tell you I never listen to the news. 
Once a week, I take time and I listen to the news on the radio. And I catch myself up with what's going on. And maybe I'll catch the local news every so often. Where I used to do that every day. Had to be stuck to the news. But now I listen to all these different podcasts and they make a difference in my life. And so those can make a difference in your trade or your career or whatever the case may be. You know, that's what it's about. Inspiring you to keep surging forward. You know, if you have any questions or any thoughts on this, feel free to leave me a comment or a review on iTunes. Or you can go to the website at www.surgingforwardpodcast.com. You know, and, and, and leave a review. If you're looking to start at your own business, well, we just so happen to have courses for that also. You can check out www.surgingforward.com. If you need the CEUs for your license renewal, or if you're looking to get your tradesman license, if if you're looking to get your journeyman's card or your master's card, we have it all for different states. Check out surgingforward.com. And if you don't want to leave a review on the website or or you don't want to go to the Surging Forward podcast website, shoot me an email. I'm open to listen and we can have a dialogue. Check me out on Facebook. Look up Surging Forward pod, or Surging Forward on Facebook, not even Surging Forward Podcast. Just check out Surging Forward on the Facebook. It's real simple. Or you can just look me up on Facebook and uh, shoot me a line. Shoot me a DM. Uh, that's what they call them. I'm trying to be hip here. Um, I do know what that stands for. It stands for direct message. Hey, I'm getting smarter and smarter on that social media stuff. I'm working on it. Um, but we're all here to help each other to keep surging forward. So again, I look forward to hearing from you. I'd love to hear your success story. I'd love to hear how you turned a negative into a positive. So get a hold of me somehow. I'm, you know, whatever means is easiest for you. I look forward to hearing from you. And as always, thanks for your encouragement as we're all on that same journey to keep surging forward. Until next week, my friend, y'all have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great week. And go out there and make a difference in somebody's life. Change someone's life this week. Have a great one, my friends. God bless.